This is a CSTR simulation that we're going to develop in MATLAB. And the first thing that we're going to do in this uh, is derive a mole balance for this reactor. Okay, so mole balance, um, and the basic mole balance is DNA dt equals n dot a um, in. Okay, so that's the molar flow rate going into the reactor, and then minus the molar flow rate uh, leaving the reactor, plus a reaction rate times the volume. Okay, and if we assume that it's this reactor is well mixed, then we can assume that the concentration of A in the reactor is equal to the concentration uh, leaving the reactor. Okay, so that's going to allow us to um, uh, simplify this just a little bit. Okay, now we have uh, Na that's in the reactor is going to be equal to the concentration of A times the volume. Okay, and we're also going to assume that the volume is constant inside this reactor. Uh, we can also uh, write Na in. That's going to be uh, Q times the concentration A coming in. And then we also have N a out, okay, and that's going to be equal to Q times concentration out. Now if we make the assumption that it's well mixed, then CA in the reactor is going to be equal to CA coming out of the reactor, okay, and so I'm just going to write that as, as CA, so CA out. Okay, and then uh, I have my reaction rate term as well, and you can see that right here. Here is the uh, consumption of A, and this is for the rate for the generation of A. So we have a reaction, A goes to B, and B is, re uh, that same reaction is reversible, and um, so this is the reversible reaction, and this is the forward reaction. Okay, so we have two terms there. Um, so let's just go ahead and, and derive this. Let's actually just put it in terms of, um, you know, just in terms of mole fraction for this case. So we're also going to say that uh, CA equals XA times a concentration, a total concentration, and um, also CB equals XB times a concentration. We'll just make this uh, simplify an assumption, and also we'll have XA plus XB summation of the mole fractions is going to equal 1. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and substitute, um, start substituting these things in for these uh, different terms, including the reaction rate, and uh, let's go ahead and come up with our, our mole balance now. Okay, so we have, um, you know, I'll just assume concentration is 1. Um, let, me, let me go ahead and just make a couple other assumptions here. I'll just fill in um, a couple of numbers here. K1 equals uh, 0 0.5. K2 equals uh, 0 0.2. And we'll say that the flow rate is equal to 1. And that, we'll just put all, everything in, in SI units, meters cubed per second. And then the volume of our tank, uh, we'll say that that's equal to 1 meter cubed. Okay, so very actually very low resonance time here um, for our reactor um, equal to a second. Okay, so um, okay, so let's go ahead and just start uh, programming this in MATLAB. Um, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and open up um, open up MATLAB, and uh, what we're going to do is first of all create a function that we can call that will give us our derivative values. Okay, so once this is open um, and you see the command prompt, um, what I want to do first of all is just go ahead and change, uh, I'm just going to change my directory here. Okay, so I'll just do John desktop. Okay, so I'm on my desktop now and uh, let me create a new script. And this one, I'm just going to um, make it a function. Okay, so when I type function, it recognizes that, turns it blue, and then I'm just going to say that's xa dot, okay, equals 
and I'll name this function CSTR. So this will be my original model. Okay, and uh, so I have a function of time, the XA value, and then also XA coming into the reactor. Um, and so let me get my XB. Now, now that I have XA coming in, I can just go ahead and compute XB is one minus XA. And then uh, Q, we said that was gonna be equal to one. Volume was gonna be equal to one. Uh, putting the semicolon there just means it doesn't uh, print out. Um, and then I'll have K1 equals 0 0.5 and K2 equals 0 0.2. And then what I need to do is just go ahead and write my uh, derivative value. Okay, and that's gonna be equal to um, Q divided by V times X A in minus X A. Okay, so that was, um, that's in minus out terms. And then I also want to add the reaction rate terms. Okay, and that's going to be um, that expression. I'm gonna, I divided it over by V, so that canceled out. Um, okay, so I have my derivative term with a, a function there. I'm gonna name that uh, CSTR.M and just place it on the desktop. Okay, so now I need to also create a, a new script. Okay, so this is gonna be a script instead of a function. Um, and for this one, this one is gonna be um, actually using that function to solve, uh, solve this problem. Okay, first thing I like to do with this, these main scripts uh, is just go ahead and clear all the variables, uh, close all plots that might be there, and clear the screen as well. And um, let me just give an initial XA in value. I'll, I'll put that at 0 0.5. Okay, and then let's say the reactor is just initially just full of, of A. Okay, and, and so we're gonna start diluting that with the XA coming in, um, the, the flow rate of the, uh, the stream coming in, but also we have a reaction that's gonna be occurring that's gonna drive that uh, towards B as well. Okay, so um, let me just go ahead and integrate uh, this. I'm gonna put uh, time, uh, I'll put time one. We're gonna integrate, integrate something else here as well. And then XA1, okay, so that's gonna be my solution when I solve this. And I'm gonna use ODE15S, uh, okay? And normally I would just have, um, you know, a CSTR, that function that I just wrote. I'd tell it which function we're gonna be using. And then I would say integrate from zero to, let's say five seconds, and uh, give it an initial condition as well. In this case, I'll just put it as XA, which is one. Okay, so that was the initial condition for my, my state. And uh, you know, I, can, I can integrate this, but I had actually a third parameter here that was XA in. Okay, so normally if you just have a, a time value and a state value, you only need two, and you can write it like this. Um, but because I have three, let me go ahead and just make a, a function here. Um, and so that's just a function of t and x, and then I have actually my um, t, x, and then x, a, n. Okay, so I needed to add that third one, um, but this is the information that the solver needs. It just needs T and X, but I wanted to slip in an extra parameter there that I could pass into my um, into my uh, function. Okay, and so if I run this, actually let me go ahead and save it. I'll just call this one my main script, main.m, and if I run it, um, and then I come back to MATLAB, I'll see that it has XA, um, so if I type in XA1, then it has all my all of my solution. Now I do plot T1 versus XA1. Then it's going to come up with a plot of how XA changed with time. Okay, as so you can see, after five seconds, it approached a new steady state value. Let's just look at the, the ending value there, 0 0.56, uh, 0.561. Okay, so if we had no reaction, that steady state value would eventually go to 0 0.5 because that's what was coming into the into the reactor, but because we have that reaction occurring, 
and some of that reverse reaction um, and forward reaction, it equilibrates to uh, 0.56. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and put that into, um, into this as well. We'll just go ahead and put in the plot. Okay, so we don't have to type that every time we want to run it. But let's also go ahead and, and linearize this as well. We want to just compare how a uh, linear um, approximation to this is going to perform. Um, and I'm going to go back to, um, okay, so, so I'm back to my, my sheet where I, I developed this nonlinear model. And uh, what we're going to do is, is just take this right-hand side, and we're just going to go ahead and, and linearize it. And then we'll put that in as a model as well into our MATLAB. Okay, so um, in order to linearize a function, um, it's, you know, just use a Taylor series approximation. And we're going to put a, uh, you know, our steady state values here. And, okay, and put our steady state values in. And, you know, for every different x that I have, I'm going to um, take the first derivative, plug in the steady state values, and then have x1 minus the nominal value, x2 minus the nominal value. So if I, if I do this for this um, mole balance, um, so let's go ahead and, and write that in MATLAB as well. Okay, so we're going to come in to our editor, and um, let's just go ahead and create a new function. Okay, so when you do function, it, it kind of puts some of those that structure in place for you. Okay, and um, here are my output arguments. Um, and for this one, I'm also going to have an xa dot. Okay, so I'm going to have a, a linearized function. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this one CSTR uh, linear. And then uh, very similar to the last one that I just did, um, xa, xa, in. Okay, so three uh, values coming in. And, um, you know, the end is, is optional. You, know, you don't necessarily have to have the end. They'll put it in there for you. Okay, um, one minus xa, just to c calculate my xb value. Um, again, get my parameters in here. 0 0.5 for a k1, and k2 is 0 0.2. Okay, and then uh, let me get my steady state values in here too. So I had my steady state value of 0.5, and then we saw that XA, the steady state value, was going to be 0 0.5610. Uh, and then uh, XB steady state is uh, 1 minus XA steady state. Okay, so um, those were the steady state values. I need those because I need to linearize about those values. So I'm going to take the same equation that I had before, but this is just going to be a linearized form of it. Um, and so this was just xa in minus xa in steady state. Okay, so there's the uh, term um, and the derivative of, of xa with respect to xa in, and then times the, what's, this is called a deviation variable. Okay, and then I'm going to add, let me just put it on the next line because these are going to be just a little bit longer in terms of the expression. Uh, not quite as compact. Um, okay, so um, these, this is with respect to XA. And I've got to uh, plug in the steady state values um, for each of those. And I've just taken the first derivative of that right hand side of the equation. And then I multiply by the deviation variable. Okay, so that's just going to be xa um, minus xa uh, steady state. Okay, and then let me add one more line for xb as well. k2 times xa steady state uh, times and then xb minus xb steady state. Okay, so I have my linearized expression here. This was a Taylor series expansion of that right hand side of, of the equation and uh, and I'm returning an xa dot for this linearized uh, form of the model. Okay and then I'm going to call this uh, CSTR linear and so let me go back into my main now and uh, let me 
integrate that as well. I'll just call these T2 and XA2. And uh, I'll replace that with CSTR with CSTR linear. And uh, we'll give it the same initial conditions, same amount of time that it's uh, going to in the end. And let's go ahead and generate a plot that um, you know, just includes both of them. So this is my figure one. Um, in this case, I only have one figure, so that's kind of optional. Um, and after I generate this first plot, I'm going to hold on to that uh, trend and then plot something on that same plot. Okay, so I'm going to do T2 and XA2. And uh, just so we don't confuse the two, let me just do a red uh, dashed line there instead of the standard blue uh, solid line. And I'll also add a Y label, and that is going to be mole fraction. Okay, and then an X label, and that's going to be a time in seconds. Okay, and then a legend. I'll do a legend as well. Um, I'll do nonlinear and then linear. Okay, so let's save this and just compare the two. Um, when they run, um, okay, it looks like there was an error here. Okay. So let's see what, um, see what it is. You can select that, and it looks like I had an error um, in this expression, and there was something that it, that it didn't like. Let me go back and, and uh, see what that is. Um, let's see. Let's, let me scroll up just a little bit, see if there's anything. Okay, attempted to access V0. Index must be positive integer or logical. Okay, oh, you know what, um, there's V right here, okay, and let me see what I did with, um, with V, oh, I forgot the multiplication sign. Okay, so I thought it was V function of, of this, but it, it wasn't, okay, so, um, okay, so I'll save that, and let me come back over to main. Okay, so I have the plot that shows, um, my linear and nonlinear profiles, and you can see that they're you know, very similar. So I, I linearized about um, this point at the end. That was a steady state value. Those were the steady state values that I chose. And you can see even when we start with one, and then uh, you know track the concentration through time with this with this mole balance, the difference is is fairly uh, minimal. Okay, so I'll post. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and post these files, uh, you know, the source files um, to apmonitor.com, um, to the process control course, and uh, you know, this one is going to be um, class uh, 15 under uh, linearization, and you have another uh, video here that shows linearization of differential equations. If you want to see some of the more of the details about how to linearize uh, nonlinear models.